here's the thing. We started out friends. It was cool, but oh, wait, hang on. Sorry, wrong video. Here's the thing. The fans of Drag Race are quite aware of the fact that pretty much every season of All Stars so far has been made for someone to win it. What with Chad and All Stars 1 as the obvious first season. And then there was All Stars 2, which we all kind of knew Alaska was going to win, whether we read the spoilers or not. With All Stars 3, I remember going into the season with the mindset that Trixie was winning it 100%. And you can imagine my confusion when the season was airing up until the last episode, of course. Even when it came to All Stars 4, it was clear that the show was doing everything and anything possible to crown a non-white queen, so as to avoid any possible backlash from its audience. Hindsight is 2020, and the moment Shay lost season 9, we all sort of assumed that the season of All Stars that she's on will be dominated by her. She got cast on All Stars 5, we all expected her to do the best, she didn't, but she still won. Why am I giving Giving you all this exposition. Well, just to tell you up front that she wins this season if she makes it to the finale, regardless of how she does. So let me just quickly lay down some ground rules I followed. The point system is from 0 to 6, like on All Stars 4, meaning that the placements given out each episode are from the lowest, eliminated, bottom 2, or 3, low, safe, high, top 2, and win. Original placements are our guidelines here, but there will be some moments of defining the positions a little more, just so that there aren't, let's say, three safe queens, but rather one low, one safe, and one high queen. Obviously, these minimal changes in placements will come from the judges' critiques, not my own opinions. Next, there needs to be a double win, and that has to happen in episode 4, as it originally happened in episode 4, and the twist of LOL everyone's in the bottom is ignored because stop it. Except for the top 5 episode, when there is a top 2 and a bottom 3. I think that covers everything. If something else pops up, I'll explain it along the way. Episode 1 does not have much change in the placements, which are, to an extent, storyline driven. India has to be in the top 2, so we have to choose between Alexis and Cracker on who will join her. In the past 3 seasons of All Stars, the first episode's top 2 was a pair consisting of a queen that had a redemption and a surprisingly fun performance, like Roxy, Aja and Monique, and a queen that did a comedy performance disguised as something else, so Tatiana, Dela, Trinity. Given that India is the first type of a queen on All Stars 5, I put Cracker in the top 2 with her, as she would be her comedy sidekick. I could also make the argument of Alexis being there for storyline purposes of two season 3 queens going up against one another, but since there already is the storyline between Derek and India, let's not oversaturate the first episode. The rest of the placements are the same, and since both Cracker and India originally picked Derek's lipstick, there is no change elimination. Between the two, I think India would win the lip sync because, uh, well, it's Cracker. On Drag Race, she won one lip sync on the technicality of there needing to be a double chante, and another one because they gave Kennedy Davenport a slow recital to learn and lip sync to. India's not much better, given that her only win comes from the Drag is not a contact sport lip sync. But alas, since episode 1 was India's redemption episode, let's give her the win. Episode 2 also does not bring much change in the placements, with Shane the top 2 will either be Blair or Jujubee. Because India won episode 1, she and her biggest competition, according to her, are the team captains. So because Blair was a team captain and somewhat stepped out of her box on the challenge, I put her up there with Shay. Of course, Shay beats her, and since everyone picked on Gina's lipstick, she's gone. Episode 3 yet again does not bring much change, with Juju in the top 2 will either be be Blair or Mayhem. Looking at their outfits and comparing the critiques given to the other queens, I again put Blair up there. Mayhem's look would have probably been read for being maybe a little too simple, or rather that her reveals and the concepts of her 3-in-1 look, much like what happened to Mariah. The rest of the placements are the same. Given that Jujubee lost the original lip sync to Monet, but is now going up against Blair and knows that these lip syncs actually matter, unlike the ones on the you know, original All Stars 5, I cannot see Jujubee losing this lip sync. However, I do see it as being somewhat of a lackluster showing. Episode 4's improv challenge brings us the aforementioned further defining of the safe placements, and this is also the episode where the double win is present. In this episode, Juju and Cracker got the best critiques, so they're the top two. And again, both are the winners. The next high queen is Shay. Shay over Alexis because of Shay's runway look, which means that Alexis is safe and Blair is low. 
both Cracker and Juju choose Mayhem Lipstick. For the fifth episode, the Snatch Game episode, I don't have to guess who would be in the top two. We know that it's the two winners of the two Snatch Games, so Alexis and Shay. The lip sync song for this episode was Madonna's Open Your Heart, and uh, hear me out. It's not the most exciting song of all time. It's somewhat cutesy, and we have seen Alexis doing a similar sort of a lip sync on season 3 against Stacey Lane Matthews, and also we're talking about Alexis Mateo. I would say that she'd win this episode. This will still tie in with the India vs Alexis storyline, but now let's say that India lies to Shay by saying that she, meaning Alexis, tried persuading Blair and Jujubi to both pick Shay's lipstick two episodes ago, but that India stopped such deeds because she's oh so noble, wait no that's not one of the H's, uh, she's oh so honorable, let's say. Queens this time around buy the story even less and India is eliminated. Blair is low because yes she was and Jujubi is high because yes she was. Episode 6 starts with... Uh, Wait, what? Did I make a wrong graphic for this? Oh no, episode 6 is the Returning Queens episode. As with the previous three All-Star seasons, after the first top 6 episode there is a Returning Queens episode. This one will begin like any other, more or less, but instead of the top 5 queens left, the 5 eliminated queens walk into the workroom. This is just their episode. They're brought back to lip-sync against some of the lip-sync assassins from Drag Race's past. Each queen lip-syncs against the queen that was the lip-sync assassin originally in the episode when she was eliminated. Mind you, this episode does not involve Alexis, Blair, Jujube, Miss Cracker or Shay, minus the possible cold open with the queens talking before getting out of drag. In this episode, Derry goes up against Evie and probably loses. Next, Angina loses to Alyssa Edwards. In the next lip sync, Mariah loses to Monet. In the fourth lip sync, between Mayhem Miller and Morgan McMichaels, well, I feel like it would be a really nice thing to see Mayhem be back in the competition because of Morgan in one way or another. And in the last lip sync, India loses to Vanessa, but only by a hair. Episode 7 starts off with Alexis, Blair, Juju, Cracker and Shay, out of drag of course, coming into the workroom and seeing Mayhem out of drag, of course, there. They're, of course, gooped somewhat, but one of them mentions that they kinda expected somebody to be back. Blair, in the conventionals, is probably like, oh my god, like, there are five of us, and now there's like six of us. That's like, not fair Saint Clair. And the opening credits play after Mayhem in the confessionals just says, party. And this is the ball episode. Now, Mayhem on her season's ball episode was safe, but she did win the first sewing challenge of that season. However, seeing what other queens did and just in general what the judges thought of Mayhem's looks in this season, I don't see her doing well. I also don't see her landing in the bottom two, not with Alexis and Blair there at least. Since we cannot change the amount of queens up for elimination because... I don't know, that makes sense to me. Mayhem will not be up for elimination. The second top two spot is going to either Shay or Jujubee. Now, because Shay helped a lot of the queens in the workroom for this ball, she gets the top two spot with Cracker and obviously beats her in the lip sync. But I didn't have to tell you that, you already knew that. With Juju as high and Mayhem as low, the bottom two queens are Alexis and Blair. Shay played All Stars 5 in the fairest way possible, and between Alexis and Blair, Alexis had been better, even beating Shay in the Snatch Game episode, so we have to say goodbye to Blair. The top five episode is the comedy uh, thingy episode. Cracker is in the top two for sure, and between the other four queens, I think the other spot would go to either Shay or Juju. It really is an either or situation because Jujubee was funny in the challenge but not as funny as Shay whereas Jujubee's runway was the best of the bunch and Shay's was like the second worst and even resembled something that she wore in season 9. Oh my god but runways don't matter. So you agree Alexis Michelle won Kardashian's The Rusical episode. Okay just checking. Whichever Queen Cracker goes up against, I'll give her the win. I mean, okay, she technically did beat Kennedy Davenport in a lip sync to that song, you know which one. So who's to say that she could not beat Juju or Shay in the recital? But we will take both possibilities under consideration. Both possibilities meaning the one where Juju's in the top two and the one where Shay's in the top two. And obviously Cracker takes out Mayhem out of the competition. Episode 9 is the finale episode, with the top four doing the Rue song remix that will never live up to either Reggie Rochu or Kitty Girl. Out of the top four, it's clear 
that Alexis is the worst of the four, track record wise. So we could have the top three of Cracker, Juju and Shane, the final, 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 final lip sync that we know never matters. And as I've said in the beginning, Shea wins this season no matter what. But in the scenario where Juju was up for elimination in episode 8, Shea actually is the strongest competitor of the season. However, in the scenario where Shea is up for elimination in episode 8 instead of Juju B, just like in the actual season, she wins despite not having been the strongest competitor. However, and since the margin between Alexis and the other girls is not as big as it was with Roxy and Katya Detox in Alaska, we could see the top two of Shay and Jujubee or Shay and Cracker lip syncing at the end, with Shay again still winning. And that's it. That's the video. I bought a new mic. I don't know if it's noticeable, I actually don't even know what the quality of the sound will be now, but uh, let's hope it's better, let's hope it's more enjoyable. There's not much I can do with the noise here though. So yeah, thank you for watching.